Good morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Monday, January 21st, 2019. Happy Martin Luther King Day to everybody out there. I am Dave Biddle. I will be joined by Patrick Murphy in a moment. I uh, just want to give a quick recap on the recruiting weekend. Uh, for full details, make sure you read Bill Curlick's What I Am Hearing column. Um, it wasn't as big of a recruiting weekend as we originally thought it would be for the Buckeyes because of the weather, but still two major official visits were taken uh, for the 2019 class. Doug Nestor actually took his second official visit to Ohio State, which is pretty rare for a recruit, but when there's a coaching change, you can take two official visits. Um, he took one when Urban Meyer was still head coach, and now that Ryan Day is head coach. Doug Nestor, who is still a verbal commitment to Ohio State, took another official visit, and talking to Bill Curlick, it, it looks like it went very well. Um, Harry Miller, uh, who's been who's already signed with Ohio State, the number two center in the country, uh, also took his second official visit, so he was there along with Doug Nestor, and it sounds like Doug Nestor is going to sign with the Buckeyes here in two weeks and two days, which is now the late signing period. Not a sure thing. It's not a sure thing yet, but it does sound good for Doug Nestor. Nestor brought his almost his entire family with him on the recruiting visit, according to Bill Curlick. And again, hang out with Harry Miller a lot. That's really good because those two are tight. Um, also on the offensive line front, uh, Dewan Jones, the big massive offensive tackle from Indianapolis. He was on his official visit, his one and only official visit to Ohio State. And from all accounts, it went well as well. Uh, he was not expected to commit to Ohio State during the weekend, and he did not do that. Uh, but it's still, again, if I had to guess, I think in two weeks and two days from now, um, in the February signing period, that I think Dewan Jones will sign with Ohio State. And that's that's huge, literally and figuratively, when you're talking about Dewan Jones, all six foot eight, 360 pounds of them. Ohio State only signed two offensive linemen in the early signing period. So to get if they get Nestor and get Jones, double the offensive linemen in the class, get it up to four. Still not the five that they wanted, but four would be a really, really, really solid offensive line class, uh, especially with the coaching change and everything else that happened. So uh, there's your update on Ohio State recruiting. And now we bring in our Patrick Murphy, as promised. Uh, it, Patrick, I want to start off looking at the linebacker situation for Ohio State going into the 2019 season, really just going into spring ball in 2019. Um, There's a lot of hand-wringing from Buckeye fans, and rightfully so, about maybe some of the personnel decisions that Bill Davis made, and I'm sure above him, Greg Schiano was the one making the ultimate call about personnel. Uh, with Al Washington here now, Greg Madison, um, as far as the linebackers and any personnel changes, do you expect uh, any new starters? Do you expect the three starters that are coming back to – uh, again, be starters. Just any personnel moves you might expect uh, at the linebacker position this year. I think the linebackers will be probably one of our most closely watched positions as we head into spring and and probably even uh, fall camp. High State has had a tradition of great linebackers, great linebacker play, and it just, it it hasn't been good enough, frankly, under Bill Davis the last two years. So, um, yeah, I think. I think there could be changes. You know, you you return all three starters in Malik Harrison, Tuff Borland, and uh, Pete Werner. Pete Werner, thank you. And uh, but but those guys didn't didn't play up to snuff. And you have some guys behind them that you know are really going to push for for starting spots. I think that you know with a new coaching staff essentially coming in, almost an entirely new defensive coaching staff, and you mentioned Al Washington as the new linebackers coach, you've got to give guys opportunities. It's got to be a clean slate. And I think that, you know, with, with, with that, um, yeah, there could there could be new starters. There could be guys that, you know, we, we haven't seen yet that, that get their shot. And we've heard about young guys playing well um, in practice and whatnot but we haven't seen enough of it on the field. So it would not surprise me at all if, if at the very least we see some guys or we hear some names, I guess is what I should say, going into the spring and, and as we push towards fall camp that, that are making a, a push for those, those linebacker spots because, like you said, it, it's, it's just not been good enough. It's, it's got to be better. That's a key part of the defense. That's a key part of any defense. And, you know, with the way Ohio State's played, especially last year, you you need that linebacker play to be significantly better. Yeah, there's a lot of you know young guys coming up. You know Dallas Gantt, Roger yeah. Mitchell, Kayvon Pope. Right. Um, you know one older guy I want to touch on, Keandre Jones uh, has entered the transfer portal. That doesn't mean for sure he's going to transfer. Sure. Um, but I mean, usually if you enter the transfer portal, you are going to transfer. I know Ohio State's trying to get him to come back when they released the new roster and they didn't have Brian Snead on there. Um, as we've been talking on the Bucknuts Morning 5 for months, we've told you guys out there, don't expect Brian Sneed to be back on the Ohio State team. And now it's official. Brian Sneed is not on Ohio State's team. He will transfer. But let's focus on Keandre Jones. 
Um, they released the new roster, like I said, that Brian Sneed was not on there, but they still had Keandre Jones on there. So uh, from what I'm hearing, they're trying to get Keandre Jones to come back. He might be disgruntled and feel like, really? I mean, the linebackers were struggling all of last year. I never really got a chance. But with new coaches coming in, maybe they can talk him into staying. Just your thoughts on the Keandre Jones situation, Patrick. Yeah, I mean, it's understandable, right? He's a senior, yep. you know, similar situation with Justin Hilliard, who obviously is not as far as we know in the transfer portal, but, you know, a guy who who just hasn't gotten a shot. And this was a guy who came in, committed, flipped from Maryland the same day as Dwayne Haskins, uh, you know, four-star linebacker. I believe he was one of, you know, a top, you know, definitely top 20, I believe top 10 linebacker in the country coming out of high school. So, a talented kid that just has never gotten his opportunity for one reason or another at Ohio state. And if I'm him, I'm, I'm looking for opportunity. Like you said, there's been linebackers issues there and, and, and he just hasn't gotten a shot. So um, understandable why he explores his options. Also understandable why Ohio state with the new defensive coaching staff is, Hey, you know, saying to him, Hey, let's, let's reevaluate this. You know, we're going to, we're going to try and uh, look at everybody, give everybody a clean slate. I think that, you know, that should be the approach across the board, regardless of position at this point, you know, unless you've, you've done something special and uh, you know, obviously on defense last year, not a lot of people did a lot special um, you know, that then you, you should have an opportunity. So yeah, I think Keandre Jones is, an interesting situation because I think the only guy that that maybe even as close is Malik Harrison because of the way he kind of ended the season. I think, you know, just his his kind of abilities. But I think, you know, you're looking at, at any of those three linebacker spots. I think they're up for grabs. I think Keandre, Keandre Jones has as good of a shot as anyone to win that job. Um, and you know, so it'll be interesting to see what kind of re-recruiting job the Ohio State defensive staff does with him. Yeah, I think Malik Harrison is going to be an absolute stud as a senior. He really came on at the end of his junior year. So, yeah, I like, Malik Harrison is the one guy I'm very bullish on uh, in that linebacking core. Um, switching to quarterbacks for a moment, I mean, obviously, if Ohio State stays healthy at the quarterback position, all good. you got Justin Fields presumptively as the starter. We're still waiting to, to know for sure if he's going to be eligible immediately. Sounds like he will be. So, Justin Fields as the presumptive starter. They like Matthew Baldwin a lot as the backup. Then there's only a, one other scholar, uh, scholarship quarterback on the roster, Chris Chuganoff, the uh, former West Virginia transfer. I get this question a lot, like, am I concerned about quarterback depth? I guess other than the 2014 Buckeyes, <laughs> you get down to your third quarterback, you're probably in trouble anyway. But, right. uh, you know, I mean, I guess I'm mildly concerned. I don't know. I mean, if they lose Justin Fields and Matt Baldwin, I mean, yeah, it's going to be a concern if you're chugging off the quarterback, I guess, you know, but – Chuganoff's not the backup. You'd have to go through two quarterbacks, which, again, happened, you know, five seasons ago at Ohio State and they won the national title. But I guess I'm kind of concerned about it, exactly how I would put it. What are your thoughts on, on quarterback depth? Yeah, I mean, I think you always want to have more depth than this, right? You know, you, you're Ohio State. You want to have, you know, your your line of quarterbacks. Each recruiting class, you add another four- or five-star guy, and they don't have that right now for various reasons. Like you said, I, I think that it's rare that you go that deep in your depth chart, but it is an interesting situation, right? Because you don't know 100% that Justin Fields will be eligible. We, we think he will. He thinks he will. His family thinks he will. Ohio State thinks he will. But until we hear that that waiver is you know coming, that he's cleared to play, there's going to be some concern. And uh, when, when that's the case, given Tate Martell's transfer, Dwayne Haskins leaving, and your backup quarterback is is Matthew Baldwin, who I think is talented. Ryan Day thinks tal is talented, but has never taken a college snap. You're going to have a little bit of concern. And then, as you mentioned, Chris Chuganoff is is the third guy who they kind of brought in last year as another option because Joe Burrow left. You're you're in a weird place. So, yeah, you you definitely have some some questions there. Now, it could be way worse, right? You know, you're Ohio State and you'd like to have the elite of the elite in terms of quarterbacks. But, you know, if 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 at the very worst, your third option is Chris Chuganoff, who has started three games at the college level. Now, he lost those three games and performed poorly. But, you know, that that's your that's your third option. That's your Cardale Jones. Um, you know, it's it, it life could be worse. But 
you're the Buckeyes. You want to have a, a line of quarterbacks ready to go. I think they're going to be fine, though. I think ultimately Justin Fields is going to be your starter, assuming he stays healthy, which, you know, knock on wood, um, he should, then, then you're going to be good. I think Matthew Baldwin is a very capable backup from everything I've heard about how he played once he got healthy last year. Uh, I think I think things are going to be be just fine. But yeah, I think the depth is is a little bit of a question. You know, I think Ryan Day is is certainly trying to adjust that. You can't account for the fact that you know Dwan Mathis flipped to Georgia because of the you know rumors and, and things like that. So these things happen. It wouldn't surprise me if they go out and add another grad transfer at some point in time um, heading into the season. This, you know, this is nothing I'm hearing. Nothing you know. I'm, I'm, I'm basically just speculating, but you know, just to add another, another depth guy in there, um, just you know, in case, I mean, they even, you know, lost a, a walk on the other day to, uh, to transfer. So just to add some depth, some, some competition in the room, it wouldn't surprise me, but yeah, I think there's a little room for concern just because you are Ohio state. You've seen this happen before where you get down to the third string quarterback, the chances of that happening where that needing to happen again, I think are very small, but you know, you, you never know and you want to be prepared just in case. And the final topic here on the MLK version of the Bucknuts morning five, let's talk some basketball. Sure. Patrick, Ohio state basketball. They start off the season 12 and one, they get up to 13th in the country in the AP poll. And now they're leaking oil. Um, and, and this was not, this is not a great roster. This is, in my opinion, this will be Chris Holtman's worst roster that he will ever have at Ohio State. And we'll see if that, that bears out to be true. But that's my opinion. He'll never have a roster as mediocre as this one. But still, you start off 12-1, and one, and now you lose four straight. And some of these games are just not looking good at all. I mean, Maryland's a good team. And Maryland shot lights out. But Ohio State was favored against Maryland on Friday, and Maryland took it to him, 75-61. to 61. Now, again, Maryland was making shots that were just ridiculous. It wasn't like bad defense for the most part. But still – I mean, I don't know how you can't be concerned about this team after losing four straight Big Ten games. They only lost three regular season Big Ten games all of last season. I mean, now they're back on the bubble, I guess, at best right now. Yeah. And, and uh, they can they still have plenty of time to turn things around. There's 14 more uh, Big Ten regular season games for them. But um, it's a concern. Just your thoughts on, on where this basketball team is at, Patrick. They're not in a good place, that's for sure. This is a team that – I think is kind of become what we thought they were going to be heading into the year. You know, the, the 12 and one start change perception about this group, but you look at this roster, like you mentioned, and you know, it's, it's, it's not, there's no Kata Bates D up. There's no, even a Jashawn Tate there, there is a Caleb Wesson. And for three games before the Maryland game, he was in foul trouble, which caused a lot of issues because he's their go-to guy on offense. And the Maryland game started off well. They had other guys scoring. But, you know, when you when you look down the roster beyond Caleb Wesson, it's, it's a who's who of guys that are, you know, solid to potential backup Big Ten players. You know, you, the roster that, that was left to Chris Holtman – because of one thing or another, guys transferring, poor recruiting, whatever whatever the situation may be, is not a good roster. And, you know, you look at, for instance, the two starting guards, Keyshawn Woods, who just transferred in from, from NC State, and uh, CJ Jackson. Those two guys on a normal Big Ten roster are probably backup point guards. And instead, you're you're starting both of them. So this is just kind of what it is as, as Chris Holtman builds his team. He mentioned the other day when, when we talked to him that he'd been asked about, you know, was his first season too good? You know, people on the street, friends of his kind of joked with him about the fact that, you know, you, you did too well in your first season. Why did you go and win that many Big Ten games? Why did you, you know, make the tournament as 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 that seed and, and all that? So he said he's never going to apologize for winning. They're always going to do the best they can. You know, they wanted to send that class out well. And obviously, you know, Kata Bates Diop made a huge difference, but he did set the bar really high for himself. And, and I think this is a more kind of down to earth where you are um, 
type of team. And even that, he started off very well. Now you can look at the schedule and say, you know, they, they beat a Cincinnati and a Creighton team that maybe aren't as good as we thought they were at the beginning of the year. And, and that rose um, expectations some, but you know, you go 12 and one to start the year, you go 12 and one to start the year. They need to figure some things out. There's no doubt about that. Um, they need to find some other scoring. These, these guys other than Caleb Wesson are not performing at the level that they should. But, you know, again, this, this is, Probably not a team that's as bad as the 0-4 or the fourth straight loss record indicates, but they're also not nearly as good as the 12-1 and record indicated. So you have to find kind of a, a happy compromise in there and, and figure out what you're going to be the rest of the year. In the Big Ten, nine teams might get in the tournament. So I think Ohio State is still in, like you said, long season, still in a position to, uh, to make the tournament. You've got a lot of time left, a lot of uh, teams on the resume that can, can, uh, can seriously help you out. Great stuff from Patrick Murphy. Really appreciate you joining me here on a holiday, my friend. And thanks to all the listeners out there as well for listening to the show here on MLK Day. I hope everyone has a great day. Let's hear that Buckeye swag, best damn band in the land. Mm-hmm.